Please, please help me welcome Patricia Morgan. I had it up to here. In the time that we are starting to experience our Canadian recession, more and more people are saying that. But are they asking where and what is here? Is here an anxiety attack? Is here feeling frustrated and taking it out on your family? Or is here a depression? An alternative is to demonstrate resilience. Resilience is the ability, the capacity to withstand and or recover from a variety of challenges and adversity. Whether that is recession, change, which of course much change is happening with recession, whether that is mistakes, poor behavior of other people, or perhaps once in a while the poor behavior of yourself. That one's the hardest one. And I like to use the rubber band as an analogy. As you put it in your hand in this position. What are some words that come to mind with rubber band in this position? This is your audience participation <coughs> opportunity. <laughs> Relax, thank you. Aha! Relaxed and having a giggle. What else? Light. Light, thank you. Perfect. So we need moments in our life where we're relaxed, quiet, calm, maybe taking a nap. But if we stay there too long, especially for the youngins in the room, life becomes meaningless and boring. But well, what else can a rubber band do? Right. You ever had that boring, meaningless job and you're longing for some stretch? I've been there. And what happens? when we have too much stretch. Break, snap, or crack. This is the analogy of resilience. It's your responsibility to know how much rest, calm, peace, relaxation you need in your life, and just how much challenge you need in your life. What happens if you try to stretch yourself as far as mine, you'll snap, crack, or break? You'll notice that some people are like a hearty Harry. He's got five kids, great wife, all his employees love him. He comes home on the weekend, renovates and serves dinner every Sunday night. And ladies, he doesn't exist. We, we do not want to compare ourselves to either robust Roberta or hearty Harry, or we will put ourselves at risk. You have a bookmark in front of you as well. We're going to cover three points. And the number one point is listen to your body. This is one of the mistakes that people that aren't stressed hardy don't do. Our thoughts and our mind can tell us all kinds of weird stories that we can climb mountains, save the world, and we may put ourselves at risk for cracking, snapping, or breaking. But our body doesn't lie. There are actually over 110 messages that the body gives us that we are at risk of being in too much distress. For me, one of the early signals, some whispers, is when I get up in the morning, I look in the mirror, and what's happening to this eye? You have eye twitching, I have eye twitching. That's my number one body message that says, slow down and say a few no's. One of the ways to check if you're taking good care of your body is to regularly do a body scan from your head to your toes and do what we do in the helping professional world when we teach stress management, and that is to check in with your body and see if there's any muscle that is tightening up and constricting. And I invite you all at your tables just to take a moment right now and squeeze your ears with your shoulders. I'm going to count to three. One, two, three. Squeeze tight. One, two, three. Breathe in and let it go. <laughs> People who do simple little movements like that stay healthier. Yes, so the Institute, the Canadian Institute of Stress discovered that if people checked in with their bodies at least twice a day, incremental check-ins and took care of their body, were something like 30% less stressed out at the end of the day. So I encourage you to do 30-second quickies. 
And don't go there, young man. It means that you can take care of your body in less than 30 seconds. Yes. Number two point on your card is edit your thoughts and your talk. Did you know that you average between 40 and 60,000 thoughts a day? Many of them unconscious. Just notice that we have these thoughts that are programmed in our head and often they are not serving us well. Why don't you take your, uh, your hand and you're going to learn how to politely point. This is the rude way to point. And I had pointed in my life at less like this. And bless his heart, he's told me how rude that was. This is the polite way to point. <laughs> All right. I want you to um, get ready to point. But first you're going to say this. You're going to say, I make me. Try that. I make me. And you're going to point to the other person and say, you make you. You make you. All right, everybody, try this. I make me and you make you. Try that. I make me and you make you. Now just turn back and add this little piece. You did a great job. <laughs> so people do behave. They do say words and lines that we don't like. And yes, we react. But nobody makes you. You make you and I make me. And that leaves us both responsible for our own lives. I'm just going to finish this last point with there's two major thought patterns that most of us know about, and that's called optimism and pessimism. We can have personal optimism and pessimism. We can also have business optimism and pessimism. And we need a little sprinkle of pessimism to keep us in the arena of reality. However, all of the research by the positive psychology pioneer, who I've done a little studying with, Martin Segelman, who wrote the book Learned Optimism, and he also wrote the book Learn Pessimism, uh, discovered that optimists are healthier, they make more business wise business decisions because they take more risks. When they see a problem, their mind moves to solution rather than going into discourage. They also are liked better, so they tend to get, attract more clients. Who wants to be around somebody who's always seeing the doom and the gloom, which tends to be the pessimist. However, the pessimist needs to be honored by us. It was the optimist that invented the car. It was the pessimist that invented the brake. It was the optimist that invented the airplane. It was the pessimist that invented the parachute. Right. I'll leave you with this one thought around optimism and pessim pessimism. The optimist may see light where there is none, but why must the pessimist insist on blowing it out? <laughs> we need both. Cautious optimism is the best position to go with. Last point I'm going to cover is to take yourself a little more lightly. All it requires is gratitude. We live in a country that if we don't feel grateful, there's something I believe wrong with us. We live in a desired country of people all over the world that want to live here because of our freedoms and our culture. There's jokes made about us being polite. But I quite frankly like living and having the service like this hotel. This, I hope you give them a standing ovation, if not every meeting, periodically. I have noticed the staff is exquisite here. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Yes. Oprah started a whole movement that saved marriages and saved people's lives by having them, before they went to bed, to write down five reasons that they felt grateful for that day. And I'm very grateful for her for starting that movement. And when we start to feel grateful, something happens to us. We start having a smile on our face. Did you know that women smile eight times more than men? Well, you know, since I was a little girl, my mother said, Patricia, smile and make you more attractive. I have three brothers. She never said that to my brothers. She didn't say to my brothers, hey, Jimmy, John, and Paul, smile. and You'll be more attractive. She didn't say that once to them. We get programmed to smile. 
There's research on, of course, there's research on everything. There's research on smiling. Dr. Profane did it, and he said that he found that smilers were healthier. They were better liked. I'll tell you, don't you look at me right now. I'm going to do a big frown. You will see that my nostril is very small, and it will cuts off the oxygen when you go like this. <laughs> but when you smile, <laughs> your nostrils are blooming, and they're drawing in more oxygen, which actually brings your brain alive. Oh, it's all been researched. All of it. When you're depressed, the whole body goes down. Our whole language is about being down and depressed and heavy. The girls need to be up. When they're up, <laughs> you're in a much better and healthier posture. Absolutely. Smiles tell other people that I like you. Laughter says I'm in joy with you. And this club has demonstrated repeatedly being in joy with one another by your laughter. When we were in Australia, and then we went to New Zealand, we went to the caves, and there were these glowworms, and I heard this. I wish I were a glowworm. A glowworm's never glum, because how can you be grumpy when the sun shines out your bum? <laughs> <laughs> so your laughter and your smiles and the singing that Robin did. Robin, would you come up here with me, please? has inspired me to want to sing and with you with you let's roll you can brighten up a room with a smile you can lighten up the gloom with a smile with a smile you change the atmosphere watch your worries disappear with a smile <laughs> remember listen to your body it doesn't lie two Edit your thoughts and talk. That's up to you. And three, take yourself lightly. The biggest joke on the planet might be how serious we take yourselves. And I'm so glad this club doesn't take itself seriously. Thank you very much, uh, Patricia.